Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this cute little friend gift with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. You'll be able to see where to find all of that at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps ink and paper together. I am using the What's Cooking Bundle. This is a perfect set if you are inviting people over for your to your house for dinner or a little food treat like I'm using it for. Many of the images have a coordinating die but you also have some extra dies here that um, do not have a coordinating piece. For instance, this little whisk and this cutting board. And the cutting board is nice because it also embosses. I'm using the spoon and the measuring cups and the rubber spatula and the bowl, but I've already cut those out. I'm also using the tailor-made dies. You could use either of the larger ones. I'm using this curvy one. And again, I've already cut those out. I'm going to use some of the metallic pearls, some of the denim ribbon, crumb cake and Knight of Navy ink, some of the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. A lot of these designs would be great for this project. I'm selecting this one today, but you can see that I used a very different one here. I'm also using some of the um, baker's twine. So you can see I already cut out one of the labels from Basic White and one from Knight of Navy. I am using one of the acetate boxes. You could also do the same project with the mini paper pumpkin boxes. I'm just going to go ahead and make the, the box and folding it under you want to crease all of the score lines. And I found that if I pull these in a little bit, they tend to catch the flap a little bit better. I'm using a mug cake mix. This is the front of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that in. And that way, when you look at it in the front, you don't see the flap. I think if you fill that to start out with, it's going to be easier to do your wrapping. If you're using the pizza box, I don't know what the measurement is for this, but you would just wrap it the same way. So I'm starting at one edge and creasing and doing a finger press to get as good of a crease as I can. Fold it and keep keep going around and getting a finger press. I just want to mark this right now. I want to find out where the edges are. You could measure it, but this is really, I think, the easier way to mark it. And then you're going to fold it on those finger press lines and try and match up the edges and use the bone folder. And you're going to do that with each of the four creases. So the ends are going to be both on the back side. And we started with this one, but we're going to start with the smaller end this time and put that in the back. And then when you bring this over here, it should match up right on the edge and will hardly show at all. So you can go ahead and add adhesive here. And you want to wrap this snug.
I am going to make a bow. So what I want to do is have enough for the tail of my bow and enough for the loop of my bow. And so this is going to be about the center. And then right over left and go around and clip it with my third hand and just finish my bow. Remove the third hand and snug up the bow. And then tighten it up, make the loops the size you want, and you can fuss with the bow all you want. And then trim it. By leaving it attached, it saves a lot of ribbon. Okay, and then I want to just put that to the center. I didn't mention that I'm also using the Stamparatus. You do not need the Stamparatus. If you're only making one of these, you can go ahead and stamp it and die cut it as you want. But if you're making multiples, you will save cardstock by cutting these all out, saving one that has plenty of space around it. And then just fit these pieces in like puzzle pieces. So I'm going to use crumb cake for the spoon and the rubber spatula. And it does look like it's still pretty inky. Knight of Navy for the measuring cups and the bowl. Close it up. And my, my friend Gidget's gadget to get good even compression. And that looks pretty good. My crumb cake is inkier than it should be, I think, but the Knight of Navy looks great. The Take Your Pick does a nice job of picking up these pieces. And then sending you a dash of kindness and a spoonful of love. And I'm inking this with Knight of Navy. And this is going to go in kind of the top half of it. So I'm going to start off by putting the measuring spoons and I'm just going to be putting adhesive on this side. And I'm going to go ahead and put adhesive on the rubber spatula. And I'm focusing on one side of the spatula. I'm not putting adhesive on the spoon in the bowl just yet. So the measuring spoons go here, hanging off the side. And the rubber spatula goes underneath, also hanging off the side a little bit. For the bowl, I'm going to cut this line about an inch or so, maybe a little bit less. And I'm going to just put the spoon into that slot. And I want it to be sticking up enough so I can see that that's a spoon. And I'm going to hold this part closed with a dimensional.
and another couple of dimensionals. And so these are going to go over the spatula and this part is hanging over a little bit and it's okay if the dimensional goes past the tag because that will help hold it in place when you put it on the package. I'm, I do want to hold these separate like that so I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive here. But I do want to make sure that the top is even. And because this is hanging off, I want a little mini dimensional or one of these partial dimensionals over here so that that stays put. Bringing my package back in. And in this case, I do want to have about probably 18 inches or so, uh, maybe more. I am going to go ahead and snip that, folding this in half, poking that down through the hole, reaching through the hole to pull the ends through. and then tie this around the bow and tying this in a second bow on top of the ribbon bow. And this is way more Baker's twine than I need. And then the dimensional holds that there. I wanted to add some of these gold pearls and those are going to go scattered around at the top. I usually put three in an uneven triangle. But there you go. Which designer paper do you think works best with this? Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free directions and links for the products I used. You can click Individual Products or the Add All to the Cart. You will be able to remove products you don't need or add more products. I have lots of resources on my website. Most of them are free. It's easy to miss some of those resources or to get lost exploring. Let me take you on a quick tour. Just under the banner image are six links. Under Shop, you'll find links to the products from Bev, Shopping Strategies, My Frequent Shopping Points, and a sampling from the clearance rack. Under Inspiration, you can link to scroll all of my projects since 2011. The products may be retired, but you may be inspired by a layout, color combination, or a technique. I have the basics, where I've written about stamps, ink, and paper, cutting, adhesives, and my favorite tools. You'll find a link to Techie Tips and an easy link back to my latest post. Click on Getting Organized and you'll find some of my resources for stamp case slips, product labels, large labels for designer series paper, and more. Case inserts for dies, embellishments, and anything I think might fit in a stamp case, including ink refills, You'll also find color tools and charts, a practically free stamp pad storage solution, tabs and a quick reference for the annual catalog, and plans for toolkits. I have a video of my craft wall and more. Click on Evernote Current Products and you can learn how to share my notebook. This notebook has a note for every current product from Stampin' Up! It allows you to search by color, image, product type, word, phrase, or event, and more. I include French, German, and Dutch names and numbers when available, and the prices for all the markets. Evernote synchronizes on your phone, tablet, and or your desktop or laptop computer. 
so you can look through the Stampin' Up! catalog from anywhere, anytime. You can copy my notes for the products you own so you can find just what you're looking for. When products retire, I move them to the Retired Products Notebook, which I also share, and I host a notebook for Paper Pumpkin. Clip up, click on Sip Together and then let's stamp to come stamp with me or join my Sip Together team. There's also a link to learn a bit about me. The site map will help you navigate all these links from one page. And there are quick links along the side of my page. Shop Now takes you to my online store at Stampin' Up. You'll see the current host code. It would be a great help to me if you use that if you are ordering less than $150. You can click on the current catalogs to page through them online. And I've got a link to a color lab to get color combinations. And then there are my links to my five most recent posts. Thank you very much for stopping by and hope to see you soon.